How's your self-confidence at work? Do you have an I've got this mentality? Or do you feel like everyone else has got it? And you're just an imposter. If you're feeling insecure, you're in good company. A lot of us feel like imposters, especially at work. But as common as these feelings are, you can fight against them. So let's take a look at what imposter syndrome is, how it holds you back, and how to overcome it. Imposter syndrome is a type of chronic self-doubt. It causes us to feel like we're inadequate, despite evidence showing otherwise. And it leads us to dismiss our achievements, attributing them to luck rather than skill. Also, as the name suggests, imposter syndrome causes us to feel like frauds who've tricked people into thinking we're talented. Those with imposter syndrome see their insecurities as facts rather than opinions. And when those feelings persist, it causes several downsides. There are six primary downsides of imposter syndrome. The first downside is wasted time. Afraid of being seen as frauds, those with imposter syndrome overprepare and spend more time than necessary on their work. Second, imposter syndrome leads to missed opportunities, since those suffering can sell themselves short when advocating for promotions or hiring opportunities. The third downside is burnout. After all, if you feel like you're not good enough, you'll overcompensate and overwork yourself. Fourth, imposter syndrome leads to stifled potential since those suffering may hold themselves back due to their insecurities. Fifth, those with imposter syndrome can have trouble soliciting help since doing so would reveal their flaws to others. And finally, Imposter syndrome can lead to social isolation, as those struggling may prioritize their work above all else. As the drawbacks prove, the longer you hold on to imposter syndrome, the more likely you are to sabotage your career and your personal life. So, how do you overcome the setbacks and face imposter syndrome head-on? To overcome imposter syndrome, practice six strategies. First, record all negative thoughts and consider why they're happening. Self-awareness is the first step toward understanding what's causing your imposter syndrome and moving past it. Second, challenge negativity by thinking factually and practicing positive affirmations. For example, if you say, I can't do anything right, consider what you have done right. Then repeat positive phrases about yourself, such as, I'm creative and persistent. Third, talk it out. Pick someone you trust and tell them what you're going through. Most likely, your companion will share their own experiences with imposterism and help you feel less alone. Alongside talking to close friends and family, it's also a great idea to speak to those within your workplace, which brings us to strategy number four. The fourth strategy is to seek feedback from your manager and colleagues. By seeking feedback, you'll get out of your head and paint a more realistic picture of what's happening. Fifth, don't compare yourself to others. Everyone has a different journey, so focus on you. Spend time away from social media, reflect on what you like about yourself, and do the best work that you can do. Finally, list your successes so that you can see proof of your self-worth. When making this list, reflect on your past achievements and keep an ongoing journal. Over time, as that list continues to grow, so will the proof of your worth. If you have imposter syndrome, you're your own worst enemy. And while that's a hard pill to swallow, recognition is also the first step toward overcoming self-doubt. So, keep the signs in mind and take action by following the tips we just covered. Keep at it, and you'll soon find that you're smarter and more talented than you think.